Okay, Brother Red. Okay. So this is an important topic. Uh, I believe we all want God's best. And what I'd like for you to do is to think about what kind of a future do you want for you and your family? How do you see that? And uh, some of the things that, that we probably are all concerned about are good health and uh, uh, sound minds and uh, godly relationships uh, mm -hmm. with our uh, spouse or children or, or whatever, godly relationships. We want our children to be uh, prosperous and, and uh, serving the Lord. Uh, and our grandchildren and great-grandchildren and great-grandchildren <laughs> great we've just seen Florence's <laughs> great-granddaughter and uh, we want all of those children we're thinking about the future we want all of our children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren and on and on uh, serving the Lord and amen and healthy minds healthy body healthy mind sound mind uh, that's the kind of future that I know all of us want uh, for not only ourselves, but our family and, the, and our loved ones. And, and you know about God, he wants all of that and much, much more for you. And so that's what we're going to be looking at. How can we walk in God's best? And, and I know that a lot of people are not walking in God's best, but it's something we all uh, can benefit from. And so it's good to remind ourselves that God is good and he's the only good one. You know, Jesus said that uh, in Mark 10, 18, uh, he said only God is good. There's none other. Now, he's in a category by himself. God is good and uh, he gives good. And so all goodness comes from him. Every good and perfect, perfect gift. gift comes from him. And he withholds no good thing. And so I just have four points I want to make today. Uh, walking in God's best. Uh, let's don't settle for anything less Amen. than God's best. And my first point is we have to believe that what God wants for us is better than what we can get on our own. Okay, so a lot of people think, well, I have to just strive and I have to uh, grasp for and grab for things. And, uh, uh, but let me tell you, God wants good things for you. Mm -hmm. He wants better things than you can uh, imagine or even get on your own. You, uh, you know, in Jeremiah 29, 11, he wants good things his thoughts his plans for you Amen. are good. good and he wants to give you a good <clears throat> future and the future he wants to give you is better than what you can get on your own you know i've uh, dealt with a lot of people that they come up with their plans and they Amen. their agenda and then they want god to bless them and uh, sometimes he does but it doesn't always work out but it's better, and I'm going to say this right off the bat, it's better to see what he wants for us than to get our agenda and say, this is my plan, and I want God to bless it. It's far better to seek God and his kingdom first. Amen. So it didn't say build your agenda first. It says seek his kingdom first, and there has to be a reason for that because what God has for you is better than what you can get on your own. And, and we have to remember, there are two different ways to get things in this life. One is to receive from God, and the other is to strive and grasp and grab and get whatever we can. Those are two different ways, totally different ways. Most of the world is in that second category of striving uh, to get whatever they can get and hoard it up and bring it in and get hold of it and not let anybody get hold. That's number two, but that's not the best. <laughs> the best is seeking first the kingdom of God and receiving from him. John the Baptist said in uh, John 3, 27, uh, a person has nothing except what he has received from heaven. Woo! 
Oh, Amen. that's an important scripture right there. You can grasp for things, you can strive for things, but he said, and this is breath breathed by the Holy Spirit. A man has nothing, or a person has nothing except what they've received from God. So you can strive for things, but it doesn't count for anything. It's what you receive from God. That's the best thing that you can possibly have. You know, in Psalm 47, uh, verse 4, it says, God has an inheritance for you, and it's the best. It's his glory. It, it's the most Hallelujah. desirable inheritance, the most in desirable inheritance, he says, and, and that's what he has for you. And, and then in uh, Deuteronomy, I, I believe it's 12, 9, that says, we have rest and inheritance. So the only place you get rest is when you're in the inheritance, oh, wow. because your inheritance is the best thing. But and that's where you can have rest. Now, I know a lot of people, and even here today, you're looking for rest. Mm. You, you feel uh, uh, in turmoil, things in, are in turmoil around you, and uh, there are all kinds of difficulties uh, happening around you, and, and you don't feel at rest. Well, let me tell you, you get rest when you seek God's best, and you put that as your number one priority. You seek what God has for you, it's far better than you can gain on your own. We have to realize God has good plans for you, and they are better than what you can plan yourself, and it, it turns out to be your glory, and that's God's purpose and, pur and God's mm -hmm. destiny for you. That's the best plan that you can follow is God's purpose for you. Now, this uh, explains to me why Jesus could say, I only speak what I hear my father say, and I only do what I see my father do. And why did he say those things? Because he knew the father had plans, his best plans for yeah. Jesus. And Jesus couldn't do anything better than what God had for him. So Jesus always sought God and let, he only spoke what he heard God say. He only did what he saw God do because he knew what God had for him was better than what he could choose and desire and strive for and gain himself. Now that's pretty remarkable. That, mm -hmm. That's an amazing thing. I think we'll just uh, take some time to ponder that thought. Jesus, although he was the son of God, he couldn't do anything. He couldn't do anything that was better than what God was going to do for him. Oh, he's the son of God. Hallelujah. And, and, and he's going to do great and mighty things. He's walking on the earth. I want you to just picture Jesus Christ. He's walking on the earth. He's the son of God. And he could do anything, but he couldn't do anything on his own, that was better than what God had for him. And that's the reason he could say, I'm only going to speak what I hear the Father mm -hmm. say. I'm only going to do what I hear the Father, or what I see the Father do. We need to get to the same point uh, that Jesus got to, that we knew that what we did with all our striving and all our worry mm -hmm. and all our fear and anxiety would not give us a better result than what God has for us. Hallelujah. You've got to get to that point. You have to believe that God is good. He's in a category by himself. We're not as good as he is. And he has good for us. And it's better than anything we could achieve on our own. That's my first point. You have to believe that God has the best for you and it's better than anything you can strive for and achieve on your own. Amen. And that's the reason so many families are in turmoil and so many uh, problems in their families because they have not put God first. That They're out there trying to do their own thing, trying mm -hmm. to do what seems good to them. But nothing 
nothing that we can do on our own compares with what God has for us. We have to come to that realization. That's point number one. This is a very simple message today. It has a profound impact, though, yes, result amen, amen. that we can live in God's best. And the first thing uh, to do that, and I have four points. I just have four simple points. The first one is we have to get to the point where we trust God. We believe mm -hmm. that what he has for us is better than what we can achieve on our own. Okay, so that that tells us that we can't, we don't need to operate on our own. We need to seek him. What does he have for us? When we get up in the in the morning, what does he have for us that day? What does he want us to do that day? We want to walk in the inheritance that day. Mm, and, when, and when we walk in the inheritance, see, when we walk in our inheritance, which is better than anything we could strive for and, and gain on our own, when we walk in that inheritance, that's when we can be at rest. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. That, that's the only time we can be at rest. The other times we're striving and we're in turmoil and we're, we're anxious about the future and we're worrying about this and worrying about that and striving, trying to make ends meet. But when we get to the point <laughs> that we can trust God, that he has in store for us, planned for us, a purpose and a destiny that's better than anything that we could do on our own, then we have to seek God. Now, you know, you think about the Beatitudes and, and uh, Jesus, and who did he say was going to inherit the earth? Was he? Did he say the people who are going to inherit the earth, and that's really the people who inherit the best things of the earth, Who's going to inherit it? Is it going to be those people who worry about it and strive and anxious and grasping and grabbing and just getting all they can get? Is that who inherits the earth? No. In Matthew 5, 5, Jesus said, blessed are the meek, meek. for they shall inherit the earth. The meek. Who are the meek? They're gentle people. They're good spirited they're people. Teachable. They're, teachable. They're teachable people. They're they're, they're not those people that are out there uh, in, knocking other people around, knocking them back and forth and, and trying to get ahead and trying to strive and grasping and grabbing. It's just the meek. They're gentle. They're, they're, they're receiving the best. Amen. Glory Amen. to God. Amen. Don't, don't we all want to be the meek? That Hallelujah. We're, that we're not striving, grasping, grabbing for things, but we're seeking the Lord and receiving from him. John said, you don't have anything except what you've received Seek from heaven. From heaven. You've got to come to that realization. The only thing that we can have that matters in this life is what we get from, the, from heaven. You know, and when you think about it, uh, our healing comes from heaven. Our, our prosperity comes from heaven. Our peace of mind comes from heaven. Everything that we we are and we desire to be uh, comes down from heaven. The good. The good. All the good comes from heaven. And nothing else matters. Okay, that's my first point. And that's just to make a decision. Mm. What is your decision going to be? Am I going to strive and, and uh, grasp and grab? Or am I going to receive from God? Okay. If you, that's the decision. That's the simple part. Mm -hmm. Number two. Here's number two. Sherry wants me to move on quickly. <laughs> number two. Wrap it up. Wrap it up. To <laughs> gain access to God's best, you have to go through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let me say that again. To gain access to God's best, we have to go through the Holy Spirit. Now, why is that? Well, because God has everything. God has everything. And God, the Father, gave everything to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Gave everything to Jesus. And Jesus turns over everything to the Holy Spirit to administer. So the Holy Spirit is the God on the earth, and he administers the wealth of heaven. So where are we going to? Who are we going to connect with in order to walk in God's best? To walk in God's best, we have to connect with the Holy Spirit. 
build a relationship with him. Be a, and he's a him. He's a person. Mm. He is a person. It, he's not an it. Uh, uh, just a being. He, he, he mm -hmm. is a person because Jesus referred to him as he and him. And uh, you look in John 14 and all the way through John 16, and he refers to the Holy Spirit as a person. And so you, you can build a relationship with a person. Now, see, if he was just an abstract being, uh, uh, some kind of a thing, uh, like a computer, you can't build a relationship, but he's a person. The Holy Spirit is a person. And so he is the administrator of all of the wealth of heaven. And he administers it here on the earth. And, and he distributes the wealth of heaven, the, our inheritance. He, it's the mm -hmm. Holy Spirit that mm -hmm. distributes that. And, and so now, see, number one, my number one point was just a decision. Mm -hmm. Number two point is we build a relationship with the Holy Spirit. We begin to communicate with him. And, and so this is a little different than number one. This is about the Holy Spirit. This is communicating with the Holy Spirit. And so uh, I'm going to give you two different ways to communicate with the Holy Spirit. And the first way is through your heart. Um, now, your spirit man, see, becomes alive when you are born again. And the heavenly father is the father of spirits. So he's not the father of souls. The holy, the heavenly father is the father of our spirit, man. That's our heart. That's the core of who we are. He's not the father of our soul. Adam uh, was the, the ancestor of our soul. And so everybody inherited that from Adam, the first Adam, but now we've been born again and our spirit is alive and the heavenly father is our father of our spirit. And so we've got to communicate from our heart level. That's the, that's the core of who we are. Now, Ephesians 4, 17 and 18 says, don't be like worldly people, ungodly people, uh, either. Don't be like them. They make their decisions with their mind. Talks about they operate out of the futility mm -hmm. of their mind because their heart is hardened. And okay? Darkened, yes. And darkened. So that's not who we are. We are not to be like worldly people, ungodly people, uh, uh, heathen. We're not to be like those people. They're operating out, out of, of their, their mind. mind because their heart is darkened. Ephesians 1, verses 17 and 18, uh, says the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give you the spirit. We're praying that he give you the spirit of wisdom. Okay, so we're talking about the Holy Spirit, spirit of wisdom and uh, revelation and the knowledge of him that we might, oh, glory to God, that we might know something. Yes. That when we have the spirit, then we have an understanding in our heart that the eyes of our heart or the understanding of our heart be enlightened so that we might know our inheritance and the, and the riches of our inheritance and our calling. So we know our calling and the riches of our inheritance. So <laughs> how do we know our inheritance? How do we know our calling? We know it by our heart, by the understanding from our heart. Now, the worldly people cannot do that. They know, only know things by their mind. That was Ephesians mm -hmm. 4. But now in Ephesians 1, it says we're not like them. Uh, and Paul prayed, and, and we can pray for ourselves, and we can pray for one another, that our hearts, that the understanding of our hearts be enlightened. So we go by what's in our heart and not by what's in our mind. And um, Colossians 3.15 says this, that let the peace of Christ rule in your heart. So if you have peace in your heart about a decision, that's the way that you make decisions. So mm -hmm. Christians, mm -hmm. believers, make decisions by 
the peace that's within their heart. If they have turmoil in their heart, they don't make that decision. And, and Sherry and I use the traffic light uh, mm -hmm. conditions of the heart. If you have a green tra traffic light, you have peace in your, in your heart, and you're thinking about a decision, then you go for it. If you have a, a little bit of, a, a, of an uncertainty, and, and I call it a yellow light, mm -hmm. a yellow traffic light, uh, it's not it's time. Caution. It, it's caution. Don't 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 rush rush out there and do that thing now. Uh, now, if you have a stop, if you have a stop, a red light, a red light, don't do it. Don't make the decision. So it's very easy to make decisions from your heart. You make the decisions that give you peace in your heart. I love and I want to give you some examples. See, I worked at the university, and I, and I had supervised about a hundred people. And so, and I did that over several years. And so I hired a lot of people and I fired a lot of people <clears throat> during that time. And I always did the decisions, made the decisions by my heart. Okay. And, and so a lot of times there'd be a lot of applicants for one of our positions. Uh, there might be a hundred people or 150 people apply for one of my jobs. And so I would involve other faculty and staff and they would uh, they would bring it down to a number of people and they'd make recommendations to me, but I would make the decision on what was in my heart. And uh, a lot of times I went against the people who made the recommendation because I had something else in my heart. A lot of times I followed their recommendation but only if my heart agreed with that. I had peace about that individual. And there were times I, I fought against them and I wouldn't hire who they wanted because I didn't have peace. And I'll give you this example. There was one time that uh, some faculty wanted to hire a, uh, a staff member and I had, I had uh, a stoplight and not to, not to hire that person. But they really forced me to force my hand on it uh, because they really <coughs> wanted that person. And uh, so I, I let them have it. I let them have that this person. So I hired that person. Okay. And then they came back to me, these same people who wanted this staff member, and they apologized because it was a disaster. But I knew it in my heart. I told them that was not the right de decision to make. But they insisted I do it, so I, so we went ahead and hired the person uh, who was a disaster, and, and but yet uh, we were able to get rid of her quickly. And so wh mm. what I want you to uh, see is that it makes differences if you make your decisions. And this is about uh, your job or education or uh, marriage or whatever. Do it by your heart. That's the way you communicate with the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is in your heart if you're a born again believer. So that's that's the way. Use that traffic light. Uh, green, yellow, or uh, red uh, as far as making decisions in your life. And, and that's communicating with the Holy Spirit. Another way to communicate with the Holy Spirit, of course, is to use the spirit language which is praying in tongues. So if you pray in tongues and then and you're asking the Holy Spirit about a situation to do something, make a decision to do something or not to do it, uh, then <clears throat> he will respond. He is a person. He likes to communicate. Amen. He likes to talk to you. And so talk to him. Talk to him in his language. Talk to him in your own language and expect response. Give him time mm -hmm. to respond. He, he's not uh, bashful, and he's not uh, timid, and, and he's not uh, uh, out there hiding from you. He wants to communicate with you, but you have to be ready to hear mm -hmm. when the Spirit speaks to you. Amen. And so you have to give him time so that you're in a position to hear it's not about him. It's you get in a position to hear. Sometimes you need to fast and pray mm -mm. to hear from him. Fasting and praying does not move God. Mm -hmm. It moves your flesh out of the way. Hallelujah. See, there are a lot of voices in the world, a lot of voices in the world. And 
They uh, all seem to be they important. They all seem to be important. And, and so you've got to drown those uh, voices of the world out. And uh, you may have to get away from the TV. You may have to get away from the newspapers. You may have to get away, away from, from your family. Family. You may have to get away. You have to make time and to hear from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit wants to lead you, wants to guide you. Take time to hear what the Holy Spirit. Now, these first two points are my, uh, I'm going to talk most about those two. And I have two other points. Uh, and, and so now, but they're shorter. And so uh, <laughs> this is not a long message today. But it it's an important message. We all need to walk in God's best. First one is just make a decision to walk in his best and know that he has the best for us. And second is to communicate with the Holy Spirit and build a relationship with him and expect him to lead you and guide you. Number three is to look at eternal things rather than temporal mm, things. Mm, mm. Focus on eternal things. Now, what do I mean by eternal things? I mean by like meditating on God's word being led by the Holy Spirit, uh, uh, peace and joy, and, and focus on eternal things. Because 2 Corinthians 4, verses 17 and 18, says these momentary light affliction work for us a far more exceeding glory, weight of glory. Oh, we're back to glory. Hallelujah. See, see his inheritance is glorious. And the inheritance God has for you is in, is glorious. And now we're going to get back to that glory. Uh, we're all going through things. He says the light afflictions, momentary light afflictions, and those momentary light afflictions are not to be compared with uh, the eternal weight of glory. Uh, and, and so the glorious things and our glorious purpose that he's working in us and the glorious destiny that God has, when we look at the things that are not seen, when we look at eternal things and not at the things which are seen. And see, Corinthians, in Corinthians, Paul wrote, we walk by faith and not by sight. sight. Okay, so there are two different realms. The, the natural realm and the supernatural realm. We connect with the supernatural realm with faith. We connect with the natural realm with our senses. In our what, soulish realm. With what we see, what we hear, what we taste, what we smell. That's the way we connect with the world, with the natural things. But to connect with the eternal things, we have to use our faith. And the eternal things, as I said before, were things like meditating on God's word, being led by the spirit of God, uh, walking in the fruit of the spirit, producing mm -hmm. the fruit of the spirit, like love and peace and joy. All of those are eternal. And it says we have to look at those things, things you cannot see with the natural senses. You cannot taste it. You cannot feel it. Uh, but as you look at those things, see, then he's going to work that glorious purpose and that glorious inheritance that he has for you when we're looking for those things. Mm -hmm. And that's, okay, sure you have something. Well, I just saw something in the spirit, and that is uh, at least five of you, there's 12 uh, participants, and five of you, you've been looking at those circumstances around you. You've been looking at the natural things, and this, this, this third point uh, should uh, uh, be just uh, inside of you um, uh, taking root right now because you cannot look at the natural things because they are subject to change. They are subject to change at any time. And so Brother Fred is telling us that by faith, we can change those things so that we are we are to look at the eternal things and what that's what god wants for us is the eternal things and that's going to produce a weight of glory that is far better it's the best it's the weight of glory that's far better than the things when we look at temporary things because the temporary things change you can change temporary things amen you can change your situation 
when you look at the eternal things, and that is seeking the kingdom and being led by the Spirit and following the Word of God and, and, and letting the Word of God come alive in your, in your heart. Uh, okay, so this is point number three, and, and, and I want to look at Jesus. Jesus, see, as he walked on the earth, he only spoke what he heard the Father say. He only did what he saw the Father do because he knew what God had for him was far better than what he could do. And even when he went to the cross, listen to me, when he went to the cross, it was a, only a momentary light affliction. That's what Paul said here. That's what that's the breath of the Holy <laughs> Spirit. That was on the cross. Jesus going to the cross, hanging on the cross, being beaten and being crucified. That was only a momentary light affliction compared to the eternal, eternal weight, weight of, of glory, glory because he's fulfilling his purpose and destiny and he's doing it in eternity. And it, we should look at things like he looked at it. He, even though the cross was far more than my mind can comprehend. That's right. And, and, and none of us have to go through that. We'll go through what he went through. But the way the Bible describes it was just a momentary light affliction compared to the weight of glory that was prepared for him and what he's walking in in eternity. That was just a momentary light affliction compared to the eternal weight of glory that God had for him. Amen. And it's Amen. A, I don't care how difficult your situation is. It doesn't compare with what Jesus went to on the cross. It is just a momentary light affliction only while we're looking at eternal things. Now, if we get so caught up in, in these momentary light afflictions, in our situations, in our circumstances, if we get so caught up in those things, then we miss what is really important and the best that God has for us. I mean, we have to look at the eternal things and the things that are not seen like the kingdom of God and like the peace of God and the, the joy of God. We have to look at those things. That's point number three. Look at eternal things rather than temporary things that are going to change. Number four, and this is the quickest one, number four is to forsake all. It's a mm, toughie, mm, forsake mm. all. That's it's, what it's, Jesus- it's, This is the hardest of all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the first, first one was just make a decision. Yeah. What God has for me is better than what I can do myself. Here is forsake all. But this is what Jesus said in Matthew 16, 24. He said, if you're going to follow me, You've got to deny yourself. Deny yourself. Oh, take up your, your cross. cross and follow and me. And follow me. So I'm only repeating what Jesus said. If you're going to follow me, if you're going to be my disciple, and I know this is the only way you can do it. He didn't offer you an option B. Mm. Oh, an option B is we can go to the beach <laughs> or we can go, we go to the mountains. No, the only way to follow Jesus is to deny ourselves and follow him. Pick up, Take our, up cross. our cross and follow him. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I just give you a quick example, and I'm bringing this to a closure, conclusion. Uh, see, God told me to be an administrator. Uh, I was sitting on my porch on August 15th, 1997. And uh, I heard the Holy Spirit say I was going to be an administrator. I didn't want to be an administrator. I was a teacher and a, and a researcher, and that's all I wanted to be. That was my career choice. And he said I was going to be a department head and an administrator. And so uh, there was no question about it. That's what he told me to do. I did it. I, I, I became the administrator, and, and that's when I was supervised 100 people, and I hired people, fired people. I did it by my, what was in my heart. And so I, I was on this pathway, and my pathway was to be a teacher and a researcher. And he told me to be an administrator. This was God's plan. And so that was my cross. That was the cross I had to pick up. I had to lay down my agenda, and which was to be a teacher and a researcher and pick up his, admin, his agenda, which was to be an administrator. Now, later he told me the reason he wanted me to be an administrator is that he cared about uh, those hundreds and hundreds of students that we were teaching. 
and he wanted righteousness brought right, into the, the department. Into, into the department and so I hired a lot of wonderful teachers and wonderful staff people I did all of that and uh, a lot of people didn't want me to do that uh, they didn't want me to be a department head they they didn't want me but God wanted me because he had a purpose and and, and so I had to just lay down my agenda pick up his agenda and that was my cross that I had to uh, bear and, and so to follow Jesus, to follow Jesus, I had to deny myself, deny what I wanted to do, what I planned to do, and do what he told me to do. And that's all of our cross, is to deny what we want to do and do what he tells us to do. And so that's my message, and, and I want you to have God's best. I'm turning it over to Sherry. Thank you for being here today. Amen. I don't know about you, but I want God's best. And there have been times when when I have tried to do it myself and it just didn't work. And, and so as we uh, bring this to a conclusion today, I feel like I need to uh, just speak uh, to um, um, a few things that you've been dealing with in, in your life. And um, as I speak to these things, I believe that that clears the way for God uh, to bring his best. Uh, one is um, uh, a spirit of unforgiveness, and and I'm not going to point anyone out, uh, but that's I'm just speaking what the Holy Spirit is telling me to speak, and that is the spirit of unforgiveness. If there's anyone in your life that has done something to you, has said something to you, that has been hurtful, that has injured you then right now, I want you to just release that person uh, by faith. We do this by faith. Just release that person uh, right now so that the Lord can move and work with them and also that you can receive his very best uh, that he has for you, your inheritance. Hallelujah. And so that unforgiveness, just release it right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. The second thing I need to deal with is a spirit of selfishness. A spirit of, of thinking about yourself all the time. And this is something that, uh, that um, the enemy likes to bring people into. Uh, that is the underlying um, um, effect of, of our root uh, that's what's on the, the word is root. Uh, that is the underlying root of, of suicides is the, the spirit of selfishness. And so I release that right now in the name of Jesus again, so that you can be that person that receives God's best. So I just release that, that spirit of selfishness, always thinking about what you're going through and what's going on with you and your life and, and, and what's happening uh, on, on, on your side. Uh, and so this is uh, released right now in the name of Jesus so that you can have the very best that God has for you. And number three is a spirit of poverty, a spirit of poverty which keeps an individual from receiving their inheritance. Uh, and so uh, number one was unforgiveness and that's released. Number two was a spirit of selfishness, always thinking about yourself and what you're going through. And that's been released. And now we release that spirit of poverty. And poverty is not just uh, for those who, um, they, they don't have a home or they're homeless. Uh, they don't have clothing. They don't have enough to eat. Uh, it's, it's, the word is lack. The word is lack. And the way uh, that is taken care of is just to increase your giving. Increase your giving. And you will come out of that poverty spirit. And so we release that poverty and speak prosperity into your life prospering in your bodies, prospering in your minds, prospering in spiritual things, prospering uh, in, your, in your workplace, 
um, prosperity in your family. Uh, we speak that over you right now so that you can receive God's very best uh, in Jesus' name. Those were the three that he spoke to me about. And uh, I'm thankful to the Lord. Um, this is between you and the Lord. And, uh, and so let that unforgiveness go. Uh, let the selfishness go. And also let that poverty spirit go. Uh, in the name of Jesus, because you are rich. You are rich. You know, the song says, you know, let the poor say, I am rich. Hallelujah. And it says, let the weak say, I am strong. Hallelujah. And so we say that we are strong. We say that we are rich. We're rich in, in the supernatural realm and we're rich in the natural realm. Uh, in the name, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I know this this message is is a wonderful message, and it also gets gets us on the right track. It gets us on the right track, so that we begin to think, "Ooh, I want God's best. I want that inheritance. Hallelujah! I want everything that he, that God has for me." Uh, and so. Um, I'm going to open it up here in now, just a few moments. Now, let me say something. Okay. Here. And I, I'll give a personal story. Uh, there was a woman that was contacting us uh, last uh, November, December, and uh, telling uh, about all of her problems she had. She had a part-time job, and she wasn't making enough money to live on, and, and her whole family had rejected her and, and uh, had all kinds of problems, all kinds of health problems and everything. And, and Sherry said, you, you've got to get out of the selfish uh, attitude and, and uh, everything's about me, 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 and, and go out and do something for somebody. Well, she went out and started serving lunch at uh, uh, Salvation Army, I believe, yes. uh, to other people. And, and uh, I want you to know <laughs> that uh, on Christmas, uh, she thought she was going to be alone on Christmas, and she was invited to be with all of her family, with her parents and with her children and grandchildren. And, and so everybody, all those relationships were restored. And tomorrow she starts a new job mm -hmm. at, at, with a salary that's multiple times of what she was making. Right. And, and that was just because she got out of that attitude. It's all about me, all of these problems. I've got all of these problems. Well, let me tell you, there are people with more problems than you have. Amen. And, and there's some people around you that need what you have, that you can help them. And it may just be a word of encouragement. And, and, and a word of hope. Get out of yourself. Glory to God. Uh, the, forsake all. Mm -hmm. Deny yourself. And, and take up your cross and follow God. And you'll see him do great and mighty things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.